And it is, as ever was, Thursday night yet again, the new night for VT Talk. And tonight I'm thrilled. I am absolutely thrilled. We have with us, via Skype, all the way from Brussels, one of the best brains on the planet. A researcher who I think has very few yeah. equals. And the <coughs> equals he has all agree with him. That's a good thing. Um, and that is Dr. Constantinos Farsalinos. Good evening to you, good doctor. How are you, sir? Hello, Dave. Hello to all of your team and your chat there. Uh, I'm very happy and uh, I want to thank you for inviting me on this show, your show. Uh, I hope we will contribute, uh, I will contribute my best to inform the vapors in the best way I can. And I'm really glad to participate with you in, this, in a discussion about electronic cigarettes. That is, that is brilliant and thank you so much for joining us. I'm also joined, as you will see, by my uh, partner in crime on the Hears Hour, as has been. And I think you're thinking about moving back to the Hears Hour on a Monday night, aren't you, Keith? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the evening's probably more convenient. That's always good. Uh, That's always good. And over Keith's right shoulder, not being a parrot, we have the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe, the bountiful beauty that is the one and only. Saf, how you diddling tonight, cock? All right. I'm freezing. I'm freezing to death. Well, why don't you do what they do in Pennywell and burn the floorboards and the doors? Because I just don't have to replace them. Oh, does the council does that for you. Does the woolly well, hat don't help? Don't me how. It does. The woolly hat really does help. Yes, yeah, so do the gloves that I'm wearing. Oh, I didn't see the gloves. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's safe to say that up here, in the frozen wastes of the northeast of England, it's what's known in the phrase around these parts is bloody frozen out there and it has been noticed i did see one of the kids out doing like a bob a job week chipping dogs off lampposts so that's how cold oh. it is what <laughs> it is well, shall we, we we are going to turn we are going to turn our thoughts to serious easy topics tonight because the good dr farsalinos has got a new study to share with us and he's got also some news to share with us about what's going to be happening this week in terms of um experts coming together to put the eu on the spot and that will happen right after the titles because this week sav and i have remembered we have to play the titles so hello good evening and welcome to vt talk Yes, indeed it is. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to waste any time. Dr. Farsalinos, I know that you've got a new study coming up that's being crowdfunded on Indiegogo. Um, and I'm, I'm, I know it's all to do as well with uh, possible contaminants and what have you in e-liquid. Can you explain to everybody what it's about, why it needs to be there, and, and we can kind of move on from there. Because I've, I've, there's been a lot of chatter about it on Twitter, but I want to kind of get it from the horse's mouth. So, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dave. So, uh, recently we performed a study on uh, some natural extracts of tobacco, and we compared these kind of flavorings with flavorings using uh, food-approved substances. So, uh, as a coincidence, uh, we found the presence of some chemicals, uh, some substances, which are not very good for someone to inhale. Uh, they are not contaminants. Uh, we, we have to make uh, somewhat a separation between what is a contaminant and what is an ingredient. Contaminant means that during the production of a chemical, there is a possibility that some impurities may be present inside the liquid. So this is a contaminant. For example, the presence of uh, nicotine oxide uh, or uh, nicotine impurities in the nicotine liquid is expected to, to, be pre to, to be found because the USP grade nicotine is 99% uh, uh, pure nicotine. So 
you have 1% of impurities. Mm -hmm. The same with every other uh, um, uh, ingredient like propylene glycol and glycerol. But in this case, this is an ingredient of the electronic uh, cigarette liquid. So it's a chemical that we better not inhale. According oh. to studies, which studies have been performed not only in cigarettes, but on the inhalation exposure from another source. So we know that these chemicals are not very good to inhale. So it was just a chance finding. It had nothing to do with uh, uh, natural extracts of tobacco. I have to make this, this clear because I'm getting a lot of questions. So it's not something that is present in the natural extracts of tobacco. It's present in other types of flavorings. And what we want to do is to see the magnitude of the problem worldwide, first of all, uh, and then provide a solution. Because another thing that I should stress and emphasize is that this is an absolutely avoidable chemical and there is a solution for the e-cigarette industry to remove this chemical from any liquid. Okay, uh, b b before you, you explain further on that, um, if I can just kind of get my own mind around it. So this is not in tobacco absolute. No. And it's not in the whole tobacco alkaloids that go into the WTA juices. No, no. But this is something that you found without looking for it. In uh, we, we were looking for it. We didn't expect to find it, but we found it. Okay. Um, what what kind of um, what kind of chemical is this, and how surprised were you to find it? Uh, there is a big problem with this. Uh, unfortunately, first of all, I cannot disclose too many details before we start the experiment. You can understand the reason. It's better that our team performs this study rather than anyone else. Okay. There is a risk on how you will present the study, what the impact will be. We can, I believe in my opinion, that this is a very big opportunity for the cigarette industry to show how much they respect the users and show how fast they can resolve the problem if it, if it is there, which I think that it is there. We just don't know the magnitude of its presence. And I think that will be a huge step for the e-cigarette industry to prove not only to the vapors, but also to the regulators, that they act fast, they act responsibly, and they act for the for the uh, health of the community and the consumers. So uh, I consider this a big opportunity, both for the vaping community to have us even safer products and for the industry. Now, uh, therefore, before we start, uh, because right now we, we haven't started anything, we haven't even been able to start getting the liquids from the market that we will test. We hope that we will get more than 100 liquids to be tested. It depends on the amount of funds we will raise. Now, uh, this is very important because this is, as I said, something that is absolutely avoidable. It's not, for example, like the presence of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, we know that it comes from the heating of the propylene glycol and glycerol. This is a, 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 this is a contaminant, a chemical that cannot be completely avoided. But this is something different now. This is something that can be avoided. There is a way to do that. Uh, and, but first of all, we have to define, as I said, the magnitude of the problem. How many liquids in the worldwide market, both in Europe and in the US, contain these chemicals? So we will start with that. And we know and we can provide the solution for the e-cigarette industry. And I believe that the e-cigarette industry will lack very, very fast to remove these chemicals from the liquids. Indeed. How, how long do you think uh, it will take to perform all of the tests and, and, and the research that you, that you need to perform in order to First, find what you need? Yes. First of all, uh, as I also mentioned in the crowdfunding website, we are going to publish this study in a medical journal. But we will not wait for that. Uh, we will release the results uh, earlier. And what I mean by saying earlier, by the time we will raise the funds and we will be able to, uh, to, to design, uh, to define how many samples we will test, we will immediately start purchasing samples from the market, both from Europe 
and from the U.S. And I want to thank very much the VAPE team and uh, Dimitris for taking the initiative and working on that. He will be uh, the one responsible for collecting the samples from the U.S. market. Okay. Uh, we are going to send them for tests. We hope that the testing will last two or three weeks. So uh, we will be able to have all the results available by that time. So uh, whenever we get the funds that we need, uh, we will start immediately, as soon as possible. We will not wait for the publication of the study. We will release the results earlier when we have them. Okay. Now, um, just trying to try. I'm trying to get the mechanics in my mind. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take it that the purchase of the e-liquids will be done anonymously so that there's no chance that of course yeah okay that's good um and you, you say you're going to be testing a hundred uh, or more um, and, yes. and how much of each e-liquid will you require in order to be able to do that successfully no we don't need so much we need uh, we will purchase 10 milliliter bottles or 20 and it depends on whatever someone offers but uh, even 10 milliliters is enough to perform this analysis. Uh, the thing is, as you said very well, uh, we need to, uh, to purchase all these li liquids anonymously, we, especially when we are taking the liquids from manufacturers, because uh, we want to make sure that we will take the same samples that are available for any vapor to buy. Okay. Not something that is specially made for, for, for a study. You understand what I mean? Yes. So uh, we will try and we will do it in a way that will uh, ensure that we are taking samples which are exactly the same as you are going to buy from uh, any incident. So. Yes. Keith, you had something to ask? You, you mentioned obtaining funding for this. Could funding be an issue? Uh, funding... In terms of what, you mean? Uh, I, I assumed you were referring to financial f yes, funding. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. That's, what, that's why we initiated this crowdfunding campaign. Yeah, I think um, it, it's possible, I don't know, were, were you thinking about in terms of where the funding came from in order to avoid any accusations of bias and that kind of thing? We don't, we, we don't care where funding comes from. Uh, Funding, you know, does not uh, have anything to do with the protocol design and with the um, selection of the liquids that will be tested. The selection of the liquids has already been made. I have a list of more than 200 samples that I would like to purchase, but I'm not starting getting them because I don't know how much money we will have for the testings. Uh, so we have already searched online. We already know what we should get. It's just a matter of knowing how much funds we, we have so that we will know how much testing uh, we can perform with these funds. Indeed, indeed. But funding, that's why we also use the crowdfunding, because everyone can contribute, but no one will have any uh, access or any kind of control over the experiment. Uh, it's not a matter, you know, of identifying a specific manufacturer or not. Uh, we are not, we don't want to just expose the X manufacturer who has a problem or the Y manufacturer who has not a problem. Most probably because we have to test 100 liquids or more, uh, most probably we will not be able to declare the names and the samples. But I think that this is even better because this will mobilize the whole e-cigarette industry into resolving this issue because yeah. you know sometimes maybe in one manufacturer we find nothing and so he just says that i they found nothing on me i'm not going to do anything but i think that this is a problem that needs to be, be addressed by the whole industry in a unified way so uh, it is a possibility that we will not declare the name of the manufacturer or the name of the samples but we will declare the type of flavorings who contain that kind of um, ingredients and uh, what are the percentage of the samples in which these ingredients were present. Okay, I, I, I need to ask at this point, um, I, I'm, what I'm picking up from what you're saying is that the, it's an ingredient in a flavoring that may be causing the problem. Um, yes. What What is now intriguing me is how severe would it be if this particular ingredient if this particular ke chemical 
for instance, was was uh, in what I'm using now? What effect would it have on on my body and my health? This particular ingredient. Uh, what I can say right now is that this ingredient has been tested and it has been found uh, to produce problems when inhaled. So it's something that we should avoid inhaling. Uh, I, I cannot give any more information until the time that at least we have started, we have started uh, doing the, the analysis. Okay, so we, we need to know the extent of how far it is and then we can actually bear down we on will, it. Solid. Of course, as you understand, uh, when, we, when we will make the, the publication, we will explain everything, we will present all the research on this issue. This issue has been identified but uh, the testings that were made uh, did not come from the e-cigarette industry or from e-cigarette research. It came from another source by which uh, there was exposure through inhalation of this chemical. So we know from other industries that these chemicals are not good to inhale. But these chemicals are also present in e-liquids. So I, I want to, uh, of course, I, I, most of all, I'm saying that because some people told me that maybe this research on the damaging effects of these chemicals come from, you know, e-cigarette opponents doing research similar to the cinnamon research. No, it's nothing like that. It's no one right now, until now, and I think that uh, we, we should thank them for that. No one until now checked e-liquids for the presence of these chemicals. And this is a fortunate thing because I think that if someone from the other side, you know, the cigarette opponents uh -huh. were checking them, I think that they would present the findings in a very, very, very damaging way for the cigarette yes. community. Yes, and I think actually that's... And that's, only, that's also another reason why I cannot disclose what we are doing until we have started testing the, 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 the samples. Because at that time, even if I, I disclose everything at that time, then it's, it's already, we have already done it. And we will be in front of anyone else trying to do it. Yes, I, I, I get that perfectly. I understand that perfectly. And that actually <coughs> will lead us into the, the second segment of the show very well. But I'm watching Sav's eyeballs, and I have the feeling chat's been very busy. Is that right, Sav? They have. But, I mean, you've both answered most of the questions that chat had. Of course, they they want to know, is this something that they're in immediate danger from? Um, and should they stop doing what they're doing? The, the, there's a few people that are getting a bit worried. And um, asking what sort of time scales are we looking at for the testing on this to be complete? As I, said, as I said, we will be able to perform this test within the next probably one and a half months. Uh, there is, there is no, there is no reason to panic. That's what I also mentioned in the video of the, uh, of the, of the crowdfunding campaign. Uh, if there was a reason for panic, uh, I mean, uh, it's it's something that, of course, it's very hard to find any chemical that causes immediate damage. So you have to understand that all these things are coming. Uh, any anything that may happen happens from long-term use. So there is no reason to panic. There is reason to be concerned from our side. There is a reason to define the problem and the magnitude of the problem. And I'm sure the vaping industry will resolve this issue very, very fast uh, based on our recommendations. That's, that's good. I think that will have put a lot of people's mind at rest. So just, just to reiterate that there is no panic. We're talking about long-term exposure between now and the publication of this and what Dr. Farsalinos finds out. There is no need to change your habit at this moment. Am I right in saying that? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. I think what we'll do is we'll take the first break because you, you did hint at what, what I want to talk about in the, uh, in the second half, which is our opponent's and Lord knows there are plenty of them, misrepresenting uh, studies, and I know you've got a stake in that. So we'll take the adverts, and when we come back, we'll have a little bit of a, a, little bit of a chin wag about that. And then in the third segment, I want to play in what came up out of the Ask Reading thing in the EU, because it has now rendered, finally, 
I told you I was cutting it close tonight, <laughs> Sav. Um, so I'll be able to play that in and everybody will be able to see what got said because I know a lot of people weren't able to watch it. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Or if you do, don't bother changing your liquid. There's no panic. Back in two. And we are back live here on the 16th of January, Thursday the 16th of January, where I'm joined by Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos, who is currently in Brussels, um, Sav, who is currently in the freezer, and Keith, who is currently sat in the red seat where he usually sits, talking about um, the, the scientific side of e-cigs. And, and thus far, I'm, I'm, for one, I'm very pleased by what I'm hearing. But I've been quite distraught, as I know Dr. Farsalinos has, by the misrepresentation um, and the misuse of scientific studies in the EU, not limited only to his, but certainly starting with his. And I'm, I'm just going to give him 10 minutes to vent his spleen. What happened? Why do you think they've done this, Dr. Farsalinos? Do tell. Uh, first of all, if you're talking about the, the EU and the, the Commission, uh, Let's face the fact that politicians cannot be experts on anything. Uh, I wouldn't blame ah. them. Uh, I'm, uh, let, me, let me think on a, in a, from, from, a, from the positive side of the, of the coin. I'm not going to blame them for uh, mispresenting uh, and misinterpreting our research. What I blame them, however, is for their lack of consultation. Yes. They did not ask, and in fact, even if when we offered, they did not accept any kind of consultation. And this is a very sad thing, not only for the e-cigarette industry, because if the EU is working in such a way for every issue in which they produce legislation, that's, that's something very, very unfortunate. Exactly. That's... Because when you are an MEP, you cannot be an expert on everything. <laughs> you must consult. And they have to understand that this is a public health issue and they have on their hands the lives of millions of people for the next several years. And they are making a legislation that will be implemented and will be there for years. So they have the faith, the faith of all smokers on their hands. So they should not hurry in making any decision. There is no need to hurry. They should consult and consult as extensively as possible. Not consult for three minutes like when I went there uh, last March or like Professor Ether, whenever he was saying something uh, last May, he was uh, interrupted by someone who just didn't want to hear what he was saying. You mean Mr. Bertolini? So, yeah, 
unlike Mr. Bertolini, who was able to speak and say whatever he wanted without having any idea about the cigarette. <laughs> No, it's true. I mean, I mean, you, you, you are right in what you say, that, that Mr. Bertolini sat there in that, that workshop and spouted off about something he patently knows nothing about at all. According to him, his whole family and half his village has been wiped out by ASICs. And I, it was just ridiculous. And you are also right in what you say about uh, P Professor Etta. Um, just just not being heard and in fact being shouted down you are also right about when you uh, went across because i was sitting listening live to what happened and they would not let you speak and i think it's ridiculous and i honestly do think as well that the misrepresentation of the information that you provided to them was done on purpose and i would like your comments on that I don't want to comment whether, whether that was done on purpose or not. Or not. As you know, uh, Lynn Dawkins also released a, a statement saying that her research was also uh, misrepresented, misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more studies now, so we can defend what we say, not based on theories, but based on real facts. We have studies of plasma nicotine absorption. Yes. So absorption to the bloodstream. I presented two of these studies uh, on December 19th in, uh, during a meeting with the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in the US. Unlike European officials, when we sent an email to the, to the FDA asking for a meeting to present two studies on plasma nicotine levels coming from e-cigarettes, they replied within 24 hours and their reply was, please provide us with three possible dates in which you can visit us. As simple as that. Yes. And the EU, most officials don't even bother saying thank you for any kind of communication we have with them. I mean, uh, it's. I've seen that they are not only unwilling to consult, but they are also rude, to tell you the truth. And I cannot understand that, really. I mean, if you see the reaction from the U.S. officials, there were 20 people waiting to hear the studies. Mm -hmm. There were nine more people who were not able to be present there and were connected um, through, phone, through the phone and were hearing all the presentation and also asked questions afterwards. We were there for one and a half hour, not for three minutes, not for five minutes, and we did not have any time schedule. They said, go and present whatever you have, and we don't care how much time you need to present them. That's it was a proper <laughs> PowerPoint presentation in front of everyone, and a 40 minute uh, period of asking questions and answering questions afterwards. Keith? Without being patronizing, I, I think those, uh, th those comments about Europe, even looking at that in the broader context of other legislation, is, is so relevant and brilliant it should be bottled. Uh, do you know what I mean? I, I know exactly uh, what you mean, yes. I mean, the, the, I, the I fact mean how that typical that is in confirming one's sus suspicions about a lot of European legislation. They don't listen. No, they don't, they don't consult, listen. they don't listen, and it would appear, quite honestly, that they don't care. But let, let, to, to, to come back to the, uh, to the research that was done, which is, uh, has recently been backed up as well by the blood plasma levels that we get from nicotine, and I think it's important that people understand this. You said, uh, Dr. Farsalinos, that, that a 20 milligram level would provide, I think, around about the th a third of the nicotine in half an hour that a smoker would get from a cigarette in five minutes. Is that right? No. I, I said that with a new generation device, uh, meaning, I will tell you, I tested the EVIC. Okay. You know, I suppose you know the EVIC. Probably you have it somewhere there, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, the EVIC at nine watts of power delivery with an EVOD atomizer. Okay. So, this setting in experienced electronic cigarette users, that's very important, not in naive smokers who are using it for the first time. Five minutes of use of an 18 milligram per milliliter liquid with this setting 
led to plasma nicotine levels which are three times lower compared to getting to getting uh, to nicotine levels after smoking a tobacco cigarette for five minutes. It took vapors, experienced vapors, 35 minutes of vaping with this setting in order to get similar amounts of nicotine compared to five minutes of smoking one cigarette. Moreover, we tested a first generation device, a cigarette-like device, in the same uh, experienced group. And we found that even mm -hmm. after 60 minutes, 65 minutes of vaping, continuous vaping, they were not able to get their plasma nicotine levels at levels similar to smoking one tobacco cigarette in five minutes. Good grief. So, the, in, in so based on that, we feel that in the uh, best situation, like for example the EVIC and 9 watt setting, you need a 50 milligram per milliliter liquid in order to get similar plasma nicotine levels in five minutes compared to one tobacco cigarette. This, this quite explains quite nicely then why I quite find 54 milligram caramel lychee juice to be satisfying yes. and it allows me i've got to say um, and anybody that knows me well will know this especially on a show like this when i need to concentrate i'll pick it up and use it but I, a lot of the time i'm talking and when i'm talking it, it it's not easy to vape and it's much more like having a cigarette and given that i came from 60 a day but here's the thing i, I mean i know a lot of people get really, really, really worried about nicotine because over the last 30 years, we've been inculcated and, and, and propagandized to believe that nicotine is bad for you. But that's not the case, is it, Doctor? We know that nicotine has killed almost anyone. Not even by tri trials to commit suicide, as you've seen lately. Yes. Uh, nicotine, in fact, there is a, a huge misconception. And uh, you now give me the opportunity to, to say something that we discussed over in the break, that um, I, I'm really happy to announce that uh, one uh, paper and one study that we worked very hard, me with Professor Poloza, to prepare a review of all studies on electronic cigarettes relating to safety or risk profile of the, of the products, a review of more than 80 studies that have been performed by other research groups. And uh, a, a paper with more than 106 references has been accepted two days ago for publication by a medical journal in which we are discussing, in fact, all the studies that are performed on e-cigarettes in terms of safety. The chemical studies, toxicological studies, clinical studies, studies on environmental exposure, everything. So. This is a, a, an overview discussing the findings and also discussing how these findings were misinterpreted or misrepresented, either by the scientists themselves or by the news media or other, uh, you know, uh, organizations that have be, are, are trying to um, battle against the cigarette movement. Now, concerning nicotine, we also uh, devoted one part of this paper on the nicotine effects and I have cited several studies showing that nicotine does not elevate risk of cardiovascular disease, not even in, pe in, pe in people who have already established cardiovascular disease. And this is not my personal opinion, this is what population studies have shown. Okay. Uh, it's far better for a smoker to use nicotine long term rather than to keep smoking. That's a fact. Also, we know that nicotine has never, has never been classified as a carcinogen by any scientific organization in the world. The International Agency on Research uh, for Cancer, the IARC, which is the organism responsible for these classifications, does not classify nicotine as a carcinogen despite some cell studies that are coming up, you know, once in a while saying that uh, nicotine may promote cancer and so on. Uh, people should understand that any kind of study that is being made and is being published 
does not mean that one study by itself, especially when you are discussing about cell studies, one study by itself cannot change the guidelines or cannot change the consensus statement and consensus knowledge, what we generally know. If that was the case, every week we would have to change all our recommendations concerning everything. Like I mean, the there are studies <laughs> coming up, you know, every day. We cannot change or our basic knowledge, or all our recommendations, because one study says this, and the other may say the opposite. There must be there must be a huge number of studies showing consistent findings, and these findings, especially when we are talking about laboratory studies, this should be verified in human studies, in population studies. So when uh, and this is what I, uh, my advice for the for the papers, the baby community, when you are reading about a study that shows that nicotine may cause cancer based on a, on a laboratory study on cells or whatever. This doesn't mean that suddenly we are going to change our opinion and nicotine will be classified as a carcinogen. This does not happen. The same with some studies that were lately uh, presented showing that nicotine may promote cardiovascular disease. Right. Uh, this is also not the case. It will not change our consensus unless all these things are proved, are further, uh, th we have further proof uh, of them by doing more studies with so consistent results and verifying these results by population studies, of course. Indeed. So, again, just, just to recap so that, that, that everybody understands this right, you say that there are more than 80 studies in this overview? Yes, this overview has 106 references, more than 88 directly related to e-cigarettes, uh, and it discusses all the presentations, whatever has been done on e-cigarette risk and safety profile, okay. not about, for example, use in adolescence and so on, but all the chemical, toxicological, environmental, clinical studies, everything, and some... Um, discussion about nicotine okay. coming from cigarette or from electronic cigarette. Right, uh, because basically I, I, I wanted you to give me that number again so that whenever anybody on Twitter or any of the other social media or in face-to-face in -face contact with anybody who says there are no studies, you <coughs> now know how many there actually are. Over a hundred referenced and cited in this new study that Dr. Farsalinos has done, 88 of them specifically about e-cigs. So all of the crap that we hear from the likes of Stanton Glance and various other, oh, I'm going to use the word gobshite. I know it's not very professional, but sod it, I am. Um, you can turn around and tell them there are 88 and, and the consensus and the review of it says these things are safe enough, if not absolutely safe. Have I got that about right, Dr. Farsalinos? Yes, uh, exactly. And I want to make a comment on what you said. Uh, you know, I, I understand people, uh, scientists, who may have a different opinion from us. For example, they say that there must be a stricter regulation on these cigarettes, like, for example, what the MHRA is saying. Yes. Right? I, I, I respect them, although we may disagree. And I suppose they also respect our opinion from the other side, let's say, uh, uh, saying that it should be more liberal, the, the regulation. But I, I uh, have decided never to comment on scientists who are trying to convince us that black is white and white is black. I mean, a scientist that you mentioned, and I don't even want to mention his name, because I've decided never to mention his name again, because it's free publicity for him, yes. Yes, you're right. A scientist who has participated in a study himself and was a co-author when the study was published, in which study he found that 14.5% of children in Korea smoke, 5.5% use the e-cigarette, and out of them, only 0.6% were non-smokers who were using this cigarette. This scientist cannot go to the official website of his university and say that this study proves that we are witnessing the new epidemic of nicotine addiction coming from e-cigarettes. 
This is ridiculous. He's making himself look funny. He's disgracing his own university. And I wonder why the university is allowing him to discredit the whole institution by saying all these rubbish statements. I'm not going to tell his name again, as I said, and I will not present his opinions with his name, but I will present them as jokes. Because when you are saying that the 0.6% of the vapors in that group who were not previously smokers, if you say that this is the new epidemic and you are ignoring that 14% of this group is smoking tobacco cigarettes, then you have no idea what you're talking about. That... And I'm sure that he's not that stupid, but I cannot understand. I would never, I would never allow myself and present myself as stupid as he presents himself. I, I think I think that's that's all that needs to be said about that particular person. And and if I may, I'm just going to give you a round of applause because that's confirmed exactly thing I ever everything I ever thought about that person. Sav, I suspect the chat might have something to say. Um, well, I think that just received a stand ovation from chats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I I think that's marvellous. I absolutely do think that's... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm overwhelmed. Is there anything that, that needs read out from chat, Sav? I've got a couple of bits that I've had from earlier regarding the the misrepresentation. Um, Jackie Play just said there's been a huge lack of consultation across the board with the EU. Um, Oh, sorry, I've missed my own words here. Yeah. Uh, Leanna Lawless has said, EU only believes in consultation with lobbyists. Rachel Coffey has <laughs> said, in Canada, an MP is seeking to ban vaping based on PG is worse than cigarette chemicals and vapor is smoke, etc. Uninformed politicians have no business putting us at risk and that is Nova Scotia's Minister for Health. Silver Zero has said, the FDA actually sat down and listened. That surprised me greatly, to be honest. Mark Shaw has said, if they ignore these studies, they can say they were unaware of them. It's a tactic. Lena Marie said, Europe don't care what we think, only do what we are told. Christian yeah, yeah. Pifko said, the European Commission openly admits that they simply don't know enough about e yet they dare to decide the future of it. 10 million Europeans have to suffer because the Commission does not want to take the time required to properly assess the benefits and risks of electronic cigarettes. Here, here. Yeah, Lamental has said, um... This is another relative unknown, nicotine absorption in A6 compared to normal cigarettes. With proper science behind this, the stupid claims of cigarettes equivalent to 4,357 fags <laughs> could be deemed false declarations. And Mark Hamburg has asked, um, Dr. Farsinos, do you see a chance to have 100 European doctors in the EU to fight for A6 all over the EU member states? I think there are, uh, I think that already adduced the French uh, vaping uh, so vapors association have uh, have have worked and have prepared a document that was signed by 100 doctors in France. I don't know 100 doctors in the in the EU who support e-cigarettes. To tell you the truth, we are very very few. Thank God we are much more than we were last year. Yes. Uh, last year. Uh, we were considered, uh, you know, a little bit uh, outliers. Uh, currently, a lot more people and highly respected people join uh, in uh, are joining our views that e-cigarettes may are probably the revolution uh, in tobacco harm reduction, and we are seeing that. And uh, uh, but 100 doctors uh, supporting. Of course, I know that. Uh, Anonymously, there are many doctors who are um, really think, who really think and believe that e-cigarettes are much less harmful compared to tobacco, and are endorsing e-cigarette use to their patients who are smokers who cannot quit with other means. And uh, uh, there are doctors like this every day. Perhaps no one is able to do any research on e-cigarettes. This doesn't mean that they don't know. Uh, the problem, as you said, with politicians, I want to say with the FDA, for example. I'm not saying that the FDA uh, will have any kind of regulation that will be positive for e-cigarettes. 
in have in fact i have uh, uh, every reason to believe that uh, they will not have a very good regulation there in the us initially at least but uh, uh, in the us uh, it's still too early i mean they are just now starting the negotiation procedure they have not even released to the public their regulations but they still have time the problem in the eu is that we don't have time they want to pass the tpd as fast as possible which means after the before the uh, eu elections uh, they are rushing uh, so much for e-cigarettes to be inside this TPD. I'm not going to discuss whether it's, it should be inside or it should not be inside. It's something for uh, lawyers or legal authorities to discuss. Uh, what I may say is that it will be a huge loss, uh, a big opportunity loss if we hurry up on e-cigarette regulation and with the risk of destroying the product. Because yes. we may never have such an opportunity in the near future again. That's, and that again, you, you would have thought this was scripted because that's a lovely point at which to take the adverts and come back in and look at what happened with the Ask Reading thing that happened uh, in the EU earlier on tonight. Um, is there anything more from chat before we go to the adverts, Sav? No, we're good. Okay, that being the case, we'll take the adverts. When we come back, we'll have a quick look at, uh, at the video. There's not a great deal of it. Um, and then we'll kind of discuss a little more and round the show off from there. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Like I said, don't go anywhere. But if you do go anywhere, don't forget, <coughs> caffeine's good for you. Nicotine, as far as I'm concerned, is good for you. And if you've got 54 mil juice, well, if you've got it, vape it. We'll be back in two minutes. And we're back with VT Talk. Now, before we go into the, um, the Ask Reading thing, uh, I want to mention the European Free Vaping Initiative. This is something that's been set up that needs to have a million signatories to it. And I know you, Dr. Farsalinos, are, are very keen on it, are you not? Yes, yes, I believe this is a very, very important movement. Uh, and this is something that definitely the vaping community should uh, participate. Because, uh, you know, I believe that uh, although we are seeing a lot of confusion within the EU, I think that we are lucky that they decided now to uh, come up with uh, a regulation on e-cigarettes. If this happened uh, two or three years ago, they would completely ban the products without everyone, anyone discussing about it. Yes. But thankfully, they came too late. And too late means that a lot of uh, smokers have adopted the cigarette habit. And it is extremely hard to ignore those millions of people in the EU. And the same thing is happening now in the US. It's very hard to ignore. They have, they have their own opinion. They have their own right 
to protect their health. They even have a legal right to protect their, their health. When you have definite proof that something is by far less harmful than the alternative, and we have definite proof of that, we just don't know by how much this is less harmful. We absolutely know that this is less harmful. There is no discussion on that. And everyone should support that. Anyone who is saying otherwise has no idea about e-cigarettes. But the vapors, the vaping community, has the right to stand up because it is a matter of protecting their own health against a bad habit that they adopted earlier in their lives. And I believe that if someone made a mistake when he was... Uh, even before becoming an adult, because most smokers became smokers before becoming adults, why should he be punished by regulators by removing their right to have a less harmful alternative to use? It's something that I really cannot understand. It's beyond common sense. Indeed, indeed, you are so right. So that's the European Free Vapors Initiative. Everybody but everybody needs to sign up to it. They need a million signatories. I would like to see them get seven million, frankly. Do we have a, a URL? Yeah, the URL has been popped into chat. Okay, if, if you're watching on video on demand, just... The main site is um, efvi.eu and you can get to it from there. There you go. It's as easy as that. efvi.eu. Once this show's finished, go there. Sign up. Do it for you and for everybody else that might ever want to use e-cigs ever again. We should all be supporting this. This is, a, um, as I understand it, and I'm, I'm by no means a lawyer, but I understand this to be um, the kind of thing that will allow we, as vapors, as the vaping community, to have another voice in the whole machinery that is the EU. We need to be part of this. We need to sign up to it. So I'm not going to beg you because you know it's sensible. Go ahead and do it because you know it makes sense. Which brings me nicely on to the Vice President of the European Commission who tonight was having this hangout. Um, and Martin Vonk was a vapor who was asked would he take part in this he applied to take part in and he did and i was sitting watching it and i managed to record the e-sig part now twitter was going crackers as twitter always does and thank you for that i love it when twitter gets its knickers in a twist and everybody goes crackers um and it got left right to the end and there were a couple of points where we thought ah she knows it's coming so she's run away but it didn't happen and, and it actually was proposed. Now, if you are sitting comfortably, strap yourself in, up your nicotine intake to 54. We know it's the same as a fag, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's the same level as you'll get from a fag. You might need it and you might need a stiff drink. This is Vivian Redding being asked by Martin Vonk from Holland um, about A6. Users, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, a short introduction. I'm a software developer from the Netherlands. I've been smoking for about uh, 20 years, and I discovered the e-cigarettes. Um, I really like to vape them. The problem is, all my e-cigarettes will be outlawed. The only legal thing will be this. So my question is, why weren't consumers consulted when a new law was written on e-cigarettes. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I wish uh, Martin well to smoke his uh, e-cigarettes and uh, if it is concerning the European Union there is no ban on uh, EU uh, cigarettes. Again, that is a problem which has been left to the member states. They can decide on how to handle this e-cigarette uh, question. Um, the, we are not going uh, to put a ban uh, on it. Uh, and uh, 
the member state can decide to classify the e-cigarettes as a medicinal um, product uh, or not, uh, there is uh, um, a lot of smoke uh, uh, mm -hmm. over the truth, actually. Um, actually, I've read the laws. We've, uh, we vapors are a big community, so we, we will read the laws. And uh, many second generation and third generation e segments will be outlawed. There are, um, in the trilogue, many new restrictions were added. And no, my big cigarettes will be forbidden. Well, uh, probably uh, Martin uh, knows more than uh, me. The only thing which I know is that the European Union will not uh, ban uh, the e-cigarettes. Okay. Um, I do have a follow-up question. Well, no, nobody, nobody, there was never really a plan to ban e-cigarettes. I think the, the what That's makes true. many, many people angry is that it's becoming more difficult because of European legislation, proposed mm. legislation to to access these, uh, yes, what is potentially a safe alternative to, yeah. to tobacco products. No, um, uh, I, I think um, people uh, get uh, things uh, really mixed up because uh, there is a discussion going on uh, between council and uh, parliament. And mm -hmm. uh, this discussion is about um, uh, providing electronic cigarettes below a certain nicotine threshold uh, to be r regulated as simple consumer goods and to leave it uh, up uh, to a member state uh, to on adequate grounds to classify them at, as medicines, that means as pharmaceutical uh, products. So it is certainly not the European Union which is going to make this classification and it is certainly not the European Union which is going to ban these goods. Well, um, we'll have to wait and see, and I don't think we'll have to wait very long to see whether those answers have satisfied the, the, the electronic cigarette community. Before we do finish, I'd like to ask Jack Hughes. And, and that, that is pretty much where that ended. I'm, I'm going to ask Dr. Farsalinos what he thought about what uh, Deputy Vice Principal Commissioner Redding actually said. Uh, I, I'm not sure if she really understood what she said. She said. <laughs> I mean, uh, <coughs> it was, <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, I, I suppose that she had uh, no idea about the whole procedure of uh, uh, the e-cigarette uh, regulation in the EU. She was evidently embarrassed, embarrassed by, the, uh, by the questions posed by the vapor. Uh, she could not reply in detail about how they want to deal with this problem. Um, and, um, you know, uh, just by not saying in the regulation that we are banning this product, this doesn't mean that in reality they are not banned. Because you can, and the politicians are very good in that, uh, they know that they can apply so strict regulations that they, they in fact, uh, propose a ban. Mm. They just don't call it a ban. Yes, it's, it's... Now, if you take word by word uh, the proposal that they are now uh, doing, asking for plasma nicotine levels, asking for toxicological studies, not of the liquids, but of all ingredients. Now, imagine doing specific studies for each ingredient of the e-cigarette. And they are not talking about propylene glycol, glycerol, nicotine. They are talking about every flavoring. They are talking about anything you add inside. And doing that separately, not in the e-liquid as an e-liquid. These are things that no one can do. And they know that. I suppose they know that. Well, so uh, they are in fact implementing a bug. They just don't call it a bug. Yes, it's, it's a little bit like me uh, wandering up to somebody in the pub and hitting them over the head with a glass, knocking them out and breaking their skull and saying that that was actually only corporal punishment. I wasn't attacking him. Um, but the, the, is, I, I'm, I'm right in thinking, I don't know whether we're even, I don't know even, even if I'm supposed to be able to talk about this, but th there is a group of experts getting together, I believe, to uh, analyse all of this publicly. Am I right? 
Yes, we are uh, preparing a, a letter that will be sent to the EU officials, and we will be discussing step-by-step uh, step all the uh, proposals performed by the EU and answering to every of their proposals by stating specific scientific studies, which show either that their concept in terms of the nicotine uh, upper limit is wrong, and is in fact a misinterpretation of the studies, and also showing that other proposals, like the consistent delivery, like uh, the labeling we should be as accurate as possible, are not only inappropriate, but disproportionate also compared to, the, to what, what's the regulation with tobacco cigarettes. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know really, uh, a lot of people are uh, fans of the conspiracy theory saying that all this is done on purpose. Maybe that's true. I'm not going to uh, imply or to support that this is the case. But it looks very strange that they are discussing and they are regulating a matter which is a public health issue matter, and they have involved no public health consultation in that. Yes, it, it, does. it is at least strange. If not anything else, I, 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 yes, I think it's. It's. I think we're safe to say that it's definitely strange, um, without buying into any conspiracy theories, as you say. Sav, what have we got from chat? Because I do want to try and keep this to time if I can. A uh, bit late for that. We're already running over. Okay. But uh, Moonlit has said yes. A lot of smoke over the truth, indeed. Vape and Samus says, watch the lady's eye movement. She's accessing the creative side of her brain. She's making yeah. it all up. On the fly, yes. Uh, Reptile Keeper said, I honestly think they have lied so much by this point they've got confused themselves. <laughs> to which Moon had said, the best lies are based on truth and it's not a ban. Therefore, she has a basis for her comments, although whether the mesh this meshes with reality of the potential outcome is another matter entirely. Uh -huh. And Ray Yeats has said, when it looks like a duck, waddles like a duck, and sounds like a duck, it's a bloody duck. Well, yes, I would, I would, uh, I would not disagree with that because the fact of the matter is, almost everything that's sitting on the desk in front of me now, and what you have in your hand, Keith, would be banned. Yes, they would be outlawed. It's that simple. And the uh, deputy vice principal in charge of telling lies. No, the um, what is she called again? The Vice President of the Commission, I, I'm sorry, that slipped out unbidden, I didn't mean to say that, but the Vice President of the Commission appears not to realise that what uh, has been agreed in Trilog will, in effect, sign an early death warrant for almost 7 million people throughout Europe, and that can never be a good thing. I'm going to wrap it all up now, but before I do, I want to say... A massive big thank you to you, Dr. Farsalinos, for coming along and sharing your thoughts with us tonight. I have to say I'm thrilled at the idea of the studies that you're performing. I'm absolutely thrilled at the, uh, the overview that's coming out. I think that's a fabulous piece of work and I'm really looking forward to reading it. I'm also thrilled at the, this conglomeration of experts, public health experts and scientific experts that are fighting on our behalf. Um, I have to say that I think... Uh, the vaping community owes you and them a massive debt of gratitude and I'm going to implore you, never stop doing what you're doing. You have our support 110% and I think I can say that absolutely safely on behalf of everybody watching this show tonight. You are a hero, sir, and I salute you. Dave, thank you very much for the invitation. It has always been a pleasure discussing with you uh, either here or during our uh, meetings uh, in various uh, places. Uh, we really support and our only support is to the vaping community. It is to not only the vaping community, the current vaping community, but the smokers who are candidates to enter this vaping community. And we have to work very hard for them because right now, we know that you are a very experienced user. You will be able to find devices like this even if they try to ban them. But it's not about you. It's not about any other experienced uh, vapor who can find flavorings, nicotine or whatever. 
what will happen with the smokers? It is really a pity to have so many millions of smokers who will be uh, unable to have this opportunity to use a product which may work for them, and there is a good chance that it may work for them, and get rid of cigarettes. It's really something amazing. They are trying to remove this right of the smokers to have a less harmful product to try it. Maybe it will fail. Okay, but at least they yes. should try it. Yes. It's absolutely a matter of moral, an ethical issue, an issue of principles. And we have to be clear on that. We are not saying that e-cigarette is an absolutely safe product. We are not endorsing this product for non-smokers to become the new trendy habit. We are saying that smokers who are dying from smoking-related disease should have the opportunity to, be, to use a less harmful product instead of being punished for the rest of their lives to continue smoking. It's as simple as that. Brilliant. That. And that's, I think that's probably yes. all that needs to be said. I want to wind it up by saying this. I think tonight's show, and nothing to do with me, but I think tonight's show needs to be put in front of every legislator in every legislature throughout the world because I think Dr. Farsalinos has spoken sense in absolutely every ounce and every word he has said. And legislators everywhere, whether they're in the UK, France, Hungary, Romania, Spain, Italy, Greece, it doesn't matter where. In the States as well, every legislator needs to hear what he said. It, it makes so much sense. It's going to go up on YouTube. It'll be there inside an hour. I would imagine everybody needs to watch it, whether it would be Vapor Trails or whether it would be something else. Everybody needs to watch it. It just remains for me once again to say thank you, Dr. Farsalinos, for joining us tonight. Sav, thanks to you and the team for, I know chat will have been flying by a million miles an hour tonight. Chat have been awesome and they've asked me to pass on their huge thanks to Dr. Farsalinos for everything that he's doing for the community. And that's, well, we've just done that. And thanks to Keith as well, because you keep me grounded in all of this and even the little grunts and your dad buggers. I thought that was really profound, fascinating. Indeed, really. Yes, it, 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 it has been a night of nights for me. And I want to say my final thanks to everybody that's tuned in to watch live and everybody that will watch on video on demand, because without you, we would have nothing. You are the most important people in this. You are the biggest stakeholder in e-cigs. Your opinion counts. You are the most important people. Have you a quote from chat like you usually do, Sav? Because you normally the, get a, a favourite one. <laughs> the quote from chat tonight came from Mark Shaw regarding the EU, and he says, I think they've grabbed the tail of a sleeping tiger, and this tiger's going to roar. I think you are so right. <laughs> Until I see you next time. Thanks again to Dr. Farsalinos. Don't forget, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. Tiger Rose are coming now. Arrgh! See you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and one another. Be good. Bye.